Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne and this is the book He's Redeeming Love. This is chapter 9 and this is called Move to Sydney. Uh, it was always going to be a big move uh, from Coffs Harbour, a coastal town with 30,000 people in the hinterland, uh, to a city of 4 million people. I used to live in the city of Sydney when I was younger before I moved to Coffs Harbour as you will have heard in my testimony so far. Though moving back was quite a big move. It meant moving away from my um, brothers and sisters and my mother and father but it was essential because I was moving uh, to get a job. I. As a country boy, I found it really funny traveling on trains and buses. Uh, first of all, because I hadn't traveled on trains and buses in Coffs Harbour. I went everywhere in a car or, or cycled on, on my bike. Uh, but I also found it funny uh, meeting people uh, and not uh, seeing them engage with a smile or a hello like they do in the country I found that people in the city were quieter and more afraid of people and didn't really engage people with a smile or a friendly hello like I was so used to in the country they say that uh, you can take the boy out of the country but you can't take the country out of the boy and that was so true of me and still has been true in 20 years of being down here or 25 years of being down here I'm still greeting people and I'm still smiling at people and I'm still engaging Sydney people and they kind of think it's strange uh, having someone talk to them but they're happy to be talked to most of the time. I moved uh, down to my auntie's place uh, my auntie and uncle lived uh, in the northern suburbs of Sydney and it was about a 40 minute train ride into the city of Sydney. Uh, my auntie was married to a rather quiet Italian man and I used to like seeing him eating his Italian dishes that she would cook for him. She'd cook a different meal for us, the uh, two boys which were my cousins and herself and myself and she'd cook a different meal for him. He only ate Italian meals. I started to apply for jobs and soon enough I got a job in a bank in Australia called the ANZ Bank but uh, it uh, was is just a major bank in Australia. I started uh, in the bank in the mail sorting room and I have to admit that I never got used to sorting mail. It was very difficult uh, sometimes to work out where a specific letter was headed. I didn't know everyone. It was like a 10 story building. I didn't know everyone's name and they didn't always have the department name on the letter. Sometimes they just had a person's name and uh, the address of our bank and it was very hard. I found it very hard to sort mail. I never did get the hang of it. Uh, it's not an exciting thing uh, to work in a job that you, you weren't proficient at and you weren't getting the hang of and no matter how long it uh, took. Uh, I just didn't seem to be able to do it. That, uh, spoke to my self-esteem and made me feel hopeless like other people had started in the sorting room and had progressed to other jobs and I seemed stuck there. There was one part of that job that I especially liked. It was two times a day I had to go uh, to other floors and pick up uh, checks that off certain people's desks and bring them back to the mail sorting room and do something with them. I'm not sure what we did with those checks now, uh, 25 years later. Though, though it was exciting, it was exciting to pick up the checks. I used to like seeing checks of multiple millions of dollars written from one company to another company or from one company to an individual. 
Uh, I think the the highest check that I picked up was about thirty seven million dollars that was written on a check. I, I thought it was really amazing how much money I carried in those checks uh, from the deaths of the people upstairs down to the mail sorting room. Uh, one day I collected a check that was uh, addressed to my favourite rock band in Australia called Midnight Oil and Midnight Oil was a fascinating band and really exciting to see live and it was a band that played music in my car and that we played on tapes tape decks way back then when we had tape decks. Uh, we played their music in our car and played it to uh, get us excited and pumped up and ready to go out into uh, huge seas and huge uh, breaks. Uh, when the swell was up we used to put on certain songs that would get us fired up and get the adrenaline pumping in us to get the courage to go out and surf. And so. It was especially exciting that day to see a cheque uh, written to Midnight Oil. I loved the idea of getting paid, paid each week and I enjoyed spending the money. I had to enrol in a technical college as part of uh, the job in the bank. I had to get a qualification, uh, an accounting qualification. The college course was in accounting and I had to get a, an accounting qualification to continue working at the bank. Uh, in the course I met a girl which would become close to me but that's getting ahead of the story. I'll tell you more about that girl in the future. The new income allowed me to have cash of my own. I like that even though I earned $200 a week it was a lot more than the money I got collecting golf balls in my youth. The bank moved me at one stage and I had to go to a new bank. The manager or the manager that was in charge of me at the first head office bank told me that I wasn't uh, working to their standards and I wasn't progressing like they wanted me to progress and so I was on a sort of probation and I was sent to a regular a branch bank to continue on my probation. The manager or my supervisor told me as I left that the new bank uh, wouldn't be told that I was on probation and I'd simply be asked if I was working out in the future. Well, um, I, I liked the new branch and I seemed to get the hang of things. I, I learned with a teller to start to be a teller and I was pleased uh, with the job and I enjoyed travelling to the job and uh, uh, the manager of the branch called me into his office one week and said that he was very pleased with my progress and asked me if I was enjoying myself and we had a good conversation and then a week later uh, he called me into the office and said I had to resign, I wasn't working out and the bank wasn't happy with me. Uh, I'm not completely sure as he never told me why he said that and he changed his mind within a week but I suspect to this day that uh, the, the former manager had rang him and told him I was on a probation and kind of t told him that he wanted me to go. Uh, I'm not sure what really happened, it just seemed a little underhanded and uh, for years it took me, uh, for, it took me years to forgive the bank for uh, telling me I had to resign or they'd be sacking me. Uh, when you lose a job, uh, when you can't do a job successfully and you get sacked essentially, um, it takes a toll on your self-esteem. Your self-esteem has a bit of a blow. However, before I lost my job, I'd visited King's Cross for my first time. This was the infamous red light district of Sydney and it's the subject of my next chapter. God bless.